Now then, so as I'm sure you know, a nine-week festival of inter-county hurling gets underway from this Saturday, January 25th, the return of the Alliance Hurling Leagues. It will feature 116 games, no less, across the four divisions in a campaign which marks the 28th year of Alliance's partnership with the GAA as sponsor of the Alliance Leagues, making it one of the longest-running sponsorships in Irish sport. And to kick things off, we have Hurler of the Year, All-Ireland winner Seamus Callanan in studio. You're very welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Great to have you in. So, Saturday, Limerick at Semple Stadium. That will focus the minds a little bit. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Sure, you have the, the reign and league champions coming in. So, it's, um, yeah, it's a, a mouth-watering tie, I suppose you could say, and a, a great way to get 2020 going again. We have been talking on the show in recent times about the demands, maybe more so on younger players who are playing Fitzgibbon or Sigerson and trying to juggle under-20 teams and inter-county teams, and that's all been a big talking point, as it often is in January. Yeah. You're at a different end of the spectrum. Since you won the All-Ireland, what have you been doing? Um, I suppose it's been very busy. Um, you've tr- been trying to... You've been on the go, I suppose, a good bit with the, the Cup. Uh, it's been very enjoyable, but it's been fierce busy, and just getting around lots of the schools and, and things like that and trying to share, I suppose, the, the special times we've had with, in Tipperary this year, trying to share that with the young people and maybe give them something to kind of look up to and, and to aspire to. Um, but on, been, the, on the hurling front? On the hurling front, um, I suppose we, we were kind of only back a couple of weeks before Christmas doing a little bit of work on your own to try and get the bodies ready. But So across September, I know you, like, were, you do, were you in club action or like, have you put the hurl in the boot of the car and really had a good long break? Um, no, we had club action up to, um, we got bet, uh, my club was Drummond Inch and yes. Burris Lee, who were in the final yesterday, they beat us in the quarter final. Um, and since that, it's kind of been feet hang, up. hang up the hurley and put the feet up there for a while. But and would you do, be doing much? Like, are you going to the gym or did you take a proper break? Um, yeah, I kept going really because I suppose the game is different now than it was when I started before. In 2008, we'll say when I made my debut, like you could put the feet up for three months of the, of the winter, but now it's just so competitive and there's so many younger players coming through that you kind of have to keep the body ticking over a good bit. but You can't go back two stone uh, over way to train. You can't, no, that day is gone. <laughs> so you're but, back, did you say you're back to just the last couple of weeks, kind of mid-December territory? Yeah, just hurling training there for the last couple of weeks. Right. But um, up to that, you were trying to do a bit of running and some gym work just to have the body, I suppose, a bit ready for, for the demands after when the new year comes. But, um, you know, I suppose the standard of everything, the demands on the body and the amount of training you have to do now like you kind of have to keep in good shape because as you said you can't be coming in a stone or two overweight and trying to to shift that in a couple of weeks because you know the league the alliance league is starting now Mm. and um you know there's no real no real time to try and get fit once you're in the middle of the year you have to kind of come in somewhere right two years ago was a pretty miserable year for you 2018 you'd back surgery and then i think what five points in four monster outings which is like miserable yeah. miserable <laughs> exactly Absolutely miserable where's your body after that back surgery how serious was all that is that something that needs a lot of maintenance now yeah um it does to be honest with you um but i've agreed i'm lucky now in our setup our backroom team is really good and uh, we've really good physio and and doctor there and our snc coach is, is really good so um, they have programs there for me to, I suppose, allow me to, to do as much of the training as I can. But uh, you have to be smart about it too. There's some stuff that probably, you know, I mightn't be able to do uh, as good as others now anymore. Like, but that's just the way it is. And you find alternative ways of training maybe in that. But um, And so what, what would that entail? Time on your feet, certain running or certain weights or what? Yeah, like sometimes you might do some bike work, uh, so maybe on the watt bike. Um do you know, just kind of in the pre-season. Now, you do a lot, of, you do, I do all the running really as well, but just before I come back, maybe I try and concentrate it to, to bike work really, off-feet conditioning kind of, and stuff like that. But, boring. You know, boring, yeah. Um, but there'd be kind of a little bit of a tailored programme then in, in my gym work compared to other people's uh, programmes as well. Like so. And are you stiff getting out of bed? Is it at you a bit like that? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Is it that or is it old age? You know, I'm 31 now, like, so it could be a mixture of both really. But look, it's not too bad to be fair. And... Uh, you know, it came back last year, it felt good last year and hopefully um, it, hopefully it kind of holds up to the commitments this year. Well, so you're 31, so you said your, your club, Drum and Inch, you were a senior there since you were 16. I was going through the career stats last yeah. night and they're fairly ridiculous. Career Senior there since you were 16, you won a county eight years ago with Drum and Inch with Tipperary, four-time nominee for Hurler of the Year, obviously winning Hurler of the Year last year, where you scored a goal in every championship match you played in, four times an All-Star, 10 major trophies at inter-county level. That's three All-Irelands, six Munster Championships, one National League, 
record goal scorer as well, the most championship goals for Tipperary with 35, and the joint second highest goal scorer in championship history are across the country, obviously. And you dropped an F-bomb after winning the All-Ireland with a million people watching. You've done it all. <laughs> I've done it all, yeah. What does the man yeah. need to do? Uh, that's some haul, isn't it? Do you sit back at times and reflect on that and use that as a source of confidence as opposed to a resting on your laurels, am I great, but as a source of, yeah, geez. Um, I don't think I've ever reflected on it. And What you do know, you think when I read it out like that? Do you realise it's that impressive? Um, it sounds okay, but it's oh, kind of like... It sounds okay. It sounds okay, but I think it's in years to come that I'll really appreciate, you know, what, what it has been or, you know, uh, I suppose when you're finished up and you're looking back on your career mm. is the time that you'll kind of, you'll judge yourself and how good it was maybe or that, but when you're in the moment, it's very hard to to see to see these things. Like, you know, those stats and those numbers are, they, are there, and um, but all you're trying to do is add to them now at the moment and try and get as much as you can out of it while you can play. So is your approach more to keep that stuff at bay? Let's not dive too deep into those achievements. Yeah, like for example, the goal scoring record. Like I didn't even know that was a thing until you know three games to go this year in the championship. Uh, somebody said it to me, and I was kind of like, I, I no no memory of you know what was the, the tally before. Mm. You know, the clear goal, we'll say. Yeah. I didn't know the Tipperary record was 30 goals or, you know, I didn't know any of that information. So it's kind of just, it's, it's all good really, but it's, um, I suppose it's in years to come when you, when you look back, you'll I guess it's, it. it's, it's different strokes for different folks. I mean, there would be some players coming through who would know exactly what the goals record is, the appearance record is, yeah. how many All-Irelands, what years, and they use those as guidelines and targets. That's not your approach. No, I just kind of take it every game, every game as it comes. I can. I just try and, I try my best, obviously, to put myself in positions to score goals uh, as much as I can. Like and, but like, you know, next year I might, I mightn't get any goal at all. You know, that's just the way it works, really. Like and, this year has kind of been, it had or two thousand nineteen had been lucky one for me, but um, you know, I suppose you just have to, you have to think of the next game and the next chance and the next shot and the next play and. And, and see what you can kind of get out of all that. Like. Yeah, because I was going to ask you about even the mentality to score so much because it is a skill in itself. Like some lads, when they knock over their two, three points, they're happy. Yeah. I've ticked that box, grand, that's yeah. me, done. Whereas I get the sense with you, when you've scored two, five, you want three, six in a game. Like you, you want to put up some big numbers in a game. Is that something that you work on to stay greedy to when you've scored your second goal, say, right, reset here? I'm not just because you can go on with two goals and you're the main man. Yeah. But actually, you, you you never strike me as someone who doesn't think about the next ball as you've spoken about there in a game. Is that something that you're conscious of that you work on? Um, I think that's just a mentality you get over the years. Like you know, I'm, I'm very experienced at this stage and um, I've had a lot of good mentors along the way that have kind of drilled that into your mindset that it's the next ball, the next ball, the next one is the most important ball. You know, and um, I think if you treat if you treat every game like that, no matter what position you're in. You know, you'll probably you'll have a fairly good performance, and you know, some days it won't work out, and you know, things won't won't happen for you, and you need a bit of luck along the way. But if you're kind of approaching every ball like it could be your last one, then you know you're you're going to have a good chance of performing. But um, yeah, look, I just think I want to maximise every ball that comes in. Like you know, I want to mm. I want to get as much as I can out of every time I get to get the honour of wearing a Tipperary jersey. I just want to maximise that that day as much as I can. And look, at the end, if that means I've, I've scored a bit or if I've assisted a few goals or whatever it is and Tipperary win, well, then that's, it's great. Like. And are you the type, you know, Ruud van Nistelrooy, who if United win 3-0 and he hasn't scored, he's walking off peeved? No, not at all, to be honest. Uh, no, he's looking for the truth there, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I look, I'm not, to be honest with you, like, every forward wants to score and that, but like, if, if you're winning and you're contributing in any way at all, like last year, start of the year, you know, I think like trying to have a higher work rate was probably my goal of last year. And why, the why, rest of stuff why, why, why was that? that, that like. That's interesting. So yeah. to have a higher work rate, I would have thought after a miserable year where you score five points in four months <laughs> routing. Sorry to say that again. I mean, I've read out your career stats, so you're, 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 you're doing all right. <laughs> but I would have thought it, it would have been very tempting for you at Christmas to say, I need to score more, I need to score more. So yeah. it's interesting you went work rate. Was that suggested to you by Liam Sheedy or by, by somebody? No, it's actually that miserable year I had where I only got the five points. I, I kind of had a lot of work, uh, work rate in the games as well. Like my stats for work rate would have been higher. Okay. Um, so it's something that I tried to, to, I suppose, carry on in 2019 and to, to build upon and improve. So, um, you know, a lot of forwards are, are very good for, for scoring and to get a name for that. But you'd like to try and be add, I suppose, add more elements to your game every year you go out there. And I suppose work rate was something I could try and add to, 
to scoring then like what stats do you use to measure your work rate just your number of hooks blocks tackles okay. um, I think it's important for in the full forward line because you know it just prevents other teams from setting up I suppose a, an attack straight away from, from their full back line or that so would you have GPS uh, we have GPS all the time yeah we wear them what might you cover in a game um, I'd say not half as much as some of the boys out around midfield or that but um you know, full forward is a different position as well that you couldn't really go by the GPS because, you know, you mightn't see a ball for for 10 minutes yeah. in the game. You know, it depends on dominant periods of other teams, so it's very hard to judge it. Sometimes standing so, still might be the best bit of movement you could do. Well, absolutely, and I try that a lot. Do you? So, <laughs> yeah, just stand in around the goalpost there. But, um, no, sometimes, look, you just have to be cute about your movements too. Like, you know, there's no point in running everywhere and, and the ball going the other side or whatever. You have to try and read where the game is going and try and be there. Like. The scale is less high-intensity sprints and distance. It's reading where the ball is going and when. Yeah, and then, look, yeah, absolutely, being able to anticipate. Is, is Eamon O'Shea the big influence and the big architect of Tipperary movement as we know it over the last while, or is that taking too much credit away from other people? Because on the outside, we hear a lot about Eamon O'Shea and the influence and, and some of the flowing, brilliant movement we've seen yeah. has coincided at times with his presence, and we know Liam Sheedy makes such a big effort to get him back involved last year. Is he the big architect of all that? Uh, he is, yeah. Like, you know, we've, we've Tommy Dunn and Darry Egan there, they're fantastic coaches as well. So it's, it's the whole backroom team, and, you know, we've Carbro, Carolani, he's our SNC coach, and, you know, without him having our bodies in shape, we wouldn't be able to do that movement sure. either. But, um, you know, Eamon, Eamon is an incredible person, and he's a huge asset to, to our team, and, um, you know, he's been amazing for me. Uh, I wouldn't have. Half of those stats are not even close to half, only for Eamon O'Shea. So, what kind um, of things has he taught you, Seamus? Um, he just, I suppose, puts a lot of belief in me, really, and he makes you think differently about the game of hurling. And you know, a lot of people think the game is just, you know, get the ball, catch it, score it. But there's a lot more going on in the game of hurling. Uh, he's great philosophy about the game as well. Like so, um, you could learn a lot from him. And sitting down with Eamon for a half an hour to talk about hurling is is an hour well spent. Mm. Can you give us any examples of how your movement might have changed with him, or are you worried that there's full-backs listening? Uh, yeah, but I you couldn't. <laughs> I think they're going to have enough of an edge on me anyway, so I need to keep some things to myself. Yeah, but he has changed that kind of aspect of your game. Um, yeah, I think so, yeah. He's developed my game an awful lot in the last number of years. So, uh, 2014, I suppose, was my first real... Um, I suppose it was the first very good year for me, and... Um, you know that was due to due to him and really and uh, the belief that he put in me and he kind of gave me the opportunity to go out and express myself and to play with a freedom and abandonment and that kind of worked for me and gave me confidence going forward. It's very interesting. A few times there, you've used the word belief in different contexts and you said twice, Eamon O'Shea believed in me and you've talked there about freedom yeah. as if there was a kind of a bit of a burden. I was I did maybe tied in with that. You made your senior debut at nineteen. And you come on the scene, and you come on the scene hot. You score one three in a Munster final, debut against Cork three points. You get a goal in your next five championship outings. That's very young to be putting up those kind of numbers. You said yourself maybe twelve and thirteen weren't as good a years. Um, so there would have been a pressure on you for sure as a young hot talent coming through as a goal scorer. So have you had to learn how to play with a certain freedom and with a belief? Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, look, I suppose when you're coming in as a as a young player. Um, I suppose you have no fears, you have your full of confidence and um it just the first few years worked out really well and then, you know, you go through as every player goes through ups and downs in their career and I just had those ups and downs, I suppose, in twelve and thirteen. Well you must have become more of a marked man than obviously you would have been at nineteen. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I suppose I had been known to get a few goals or things you know, a few scores like that. So I was a bit more marked and uh you know, but I wasn't playing as good a hurling as I suppose I have been since. So I think you know, I just took a, I suppose, a dip in form, maybe, and I suppose Conf Tipper, confidence goes. Confidence, maybe as well, goes as well, and you know, we had a lot of a really good forward line as well at the time, so like it was very competitive anyway. So any dip you had in confidence, somebody would come in and your place would be gone all of a sudden, and you're chasing then like. That's an interesting point. That is the other side of the coin. People talk about competition for places being a great thing, and I absolutely get that. But if you're going through a tough spot and you're on the pitch and you make a mistake and your confidence is already already brittle. I presume what makes it worse is knowing there's three guys there waiting to jump in. That's a tough atmosphere to rediscover your confidence. It is, like, and it, it's a great atmosphere, um, I suppose, when you're trying to challenge and trying to win uh, competitions, but I suppose when you're on the receiving end of, of it, it is difficult. But, um, you know, I suppose, like, the, those guys want to play. If I, 
it's like any game. If if someone isn't performing on the field, you know you can't just stay looking at them in case you hurt their confidence. Yes. So you kind of have to go out and try and win the game and do what's best for the team. And you know every time if you do come off, you probably have a fair idea why you're coming off too. How did you find your way out of it? I mean, you mentioned someone like O'Shea. Did you go see sports psychologist? Do you talk to people? Is it just bury yourself in work? How did you navigate just out of that tough period? You just have to keep working hard through it. Like you know, like there has been. Obviously, sports psychologists and people within our setups, and you you do use them, and you try and find, you know, percentages everywhere. Do you find um, sports psychology useful? I do, yeah, absolutely. Um, I suppose I kind of think that you know every part of the game you should try and maximise as much as you can, and whether it, like whether it does help you or it doesn't, I think you should be open to everything. Mm. Uh, I'm I'm open to every way of trying to improve my game, and um, like my game is far from perfect as it is now, so I'm still trying to to learn an awful lot and trying to find ways that I can be different this year again and you know it's uh, it's um, the game is changing and you know people are watching what Tipperary might have done last year to win an All-Ireland final and you have to try and be a little bit different now this year as well and be a little bit unpredictable too Yeah because that's been the interesting thing with Tipperary the pattern of not backing up the All-Ireland winning years 2010 Sheedy 2016 Michael Ryan and now this year again Sheedy so what does Sheedy bring to a setup? You know from German um, Inch as well for a year. Yeah, he was great. Um, look, Liam is just really professional. He's really driven. He's very energetic. Um, he's just he's a great leader and he's a winner. Um, and I suppose he brings in great people around him as well mm. um, and creates a great culture and environment for us. And, you know, we were delighted to, to get Liam back on board last year. Um, you know, Mick Ryan before him was absolutely fantastic for us as well mm. um, but you know when we heard he was leaving and then we heard Liam was, was coming in it was a great lift again and um, look he proved you know they said don't ever come back like and he came back and won not Ireland in his first year so you know he's a very very impressive man um, but you know we'll all have to try and like I suppose management included as players we'll all have to try and up the game again mm. um, because we can't sit still on what we did last year so that's gone You're one of the more experienced players now at 31 and you were there for 2010 and 16, and obviously you go again now in 2020. Was the foot taken off the pedal in those post All Ireland years, even subconsciously looking back, or in some small ways, or were you just as dedicated and things didn't work out? But you were you were just as much at it. Oh, we were just as much at, much at it. Like if you look at after 2016, it took an absolute wonder score from Joe Canning in an All Ireland semi final to, you know, have Galway go on and win by a pint. Um, so like I just think that. We were a bit unlucky and every year you go out you need to have luck on your side and um, you know we got a bit of good fortune this year um, you know even to come back against say Wexford in the semi-final and, and just barely got through it you know mm. um, so I think we got a bit of good fortune this year and if you look at 17 we definitely trained as hard and we worked as hard um, just didn't have that little bit of luck at the end and um, you know Galway pipped us in the semi-final and they were well deserving of it too mm. but um, you know I don't think there was any um, any people kind of resting on their laurels after winning the previous year I just think it's a very very difficult thing to do mm. and um, you know once you're up there you're you're up there to be brought down and that's the way it was Do you like the new Ren Robin system? I do yeah like um, it's very I think they had a good grasp of it last year I think 2018 was very difficult because if you look at it ourselves and Waterford and Munster had four games in four weeks well, Mick Ryan and said both teams well. were gone you yeah. know? and Mick Ryan said he learned a lot of lessons and even I think Correct me if I'm wrong, but from memory, were Tipperary one of the few counties who really did embrace Club Month being April? Yeah, 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 it did. <laughs> that was your first mistake. It was tough going, yeah. The yeah. other counties were looking at you saying, what are you doing? I know, I know, it's hard because... It was the right thing to do for club players in the, in the county, but to then yeah. go into the Round Robin series for the first time in four games in a row... It is, and you feel for the club players because they need to get their games as well at that stage of the year because it's a long year of training and... Um, you know, it's 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 a hard slog really for maybe just one game and then you're off for the summer again, you know. But um I think yeah, we had a lot of games uh, I suppose close to each other, um and we got to the league final that year as well. Mm. So it all kinda happened um in a big block there and it was just hard on the bodies and like you have to remember as well we nearly got through it, you know. Um we nearly got through the clear game and could have who knows what could have happened after that, but it was just really tough and I think it's no coincidence that the two teams in Munster that had the four games in four weeks yeah. both exited the championship. Did Tipperary dial back club month last year? We had one game. Well, actually, some, no, there was two, two or three games for some, some people okay. there but in so our Tipperary, yeah, right. so it wasn't really... Right. <laughs> yeah. So maybe is it, is it the league that doesn't take as much a priority when you have the round robin? 
Um, no, I'd say the league is very, very important when um, the league is very important because you need to prepare. You need to try and find a couple of new bodies, and that's what we'll be trying to do this year as well with the Alliance League. Um, you know, you need to find your panel, and you know we've a lot of good young lads coming through. Like, but you know, I suppose we'll try and get a mix. I'd say really in the in the in the Alliance League, and hopefully we'll be able to build on a really strong panel then and be really competitive then for summer. One other thing I wanted to ask you, so we, you know, we, we've touched on it in different ways, but your finishing, you can score lots of different types of goals. It's one of the, you know, the great attributes and I guess you don't score 35 goals for your county unless you can do that. How do you practice your finishing? Um, I suppose I just do a lot of, I do a lot of individual work down in my local hurling field. In on, your, range. on your own? Yeah, I would, yeah. So what, what, what does that entail? What do you do? There might be like a, young, li- a young player listening. I'm not trying to steal yeah, stuff from no, here. Yeah, no, like, I, I literally just, I'd go up uh, 20 yards out, drop a few balls there on the ground and run onto them and just try and place where I'm going to put the ball or you try different type of strikes um, and just try and get a feel for just being in around the goals and, you know, kind of, it's almost visualise yourself in that position in, game, in the game scenario, you know, so and just keep repeating that and, look, it's not to say that on, on game day they'll, they'll go in or you'll score them, but it just... You know, the more you practice this, was the more of an opportunity you're going to have. I presume you'd almost visualise a keeper and where he might be, and therefore where you want to put it. Or maybe there's a defender on your left side or your right side. Is all that stuff going through your head, doing it? Yeah, you have to try and replicate match scenario, I suppose. Mm. Um, so that's kind of what I try and do. But look, you know, I could go out and score no goal next year as well. But nice. you still have to go through the same process of trying to have your mind right and your body right and, and everything right. That if the I suppose the opportunity occurs that you're in a good position to take it. And has it ever happened that you thought, yeah, scored a goal on the Sunday and that scenario went through a few times on the Wednesday morning or the Wednesday evening? Does it tend to crop up that way? Um, yeah, well, like not every time, obviously, but yeah, it does. It does, to be honest, because there's probably only so many ways you can score a goal too. Like, so it, kind of, yeah. it does get uh, it does get repetitive. But um, yeah, look, it has happened, and it's kind of um, I don't know, just having your mind right so that it's very hard to get an opportunity because. You know, defences are very tight and opportunities don't come that often either. Mm. So, like, you know, if you got one opportunity in a game, you'd like to be able to capitalise on it as much as you can. Like, You often do. What's been your favourite goal or the goal that you've taken the most satisfaction from? It doesn't have to be the most important one, but, I mean, a quality of finish or... Yeah, so I'd probably, like, have to say, you know, I know Conor McDonald might like to hear it now, but it's the probably the one against Wexford in the semi-final when I pulled on the ball because it's kind of... It's a, it's a skill, I suppose, that... It's a goal that you don't see too many, too many of now because most of the goals that anyone would score would be out of their hand, mm. and um, it just the connection on it was just perfect. And I, I probably knew as soon as it left the boss that it was kind of destined for the net really, and it was just a good feeling. And I suppose it was in an All Ireland semi final as well in Crow Park, and yeah. you know it's an important game to score a goal like that. Not one that you would practice very often, I would think. No, it's hard to practice that kind of a, a scenario, but. It kind of just bounced up right, and it was kind of instinct that said, "Look, just have a go at it." And mm. I suppose it was early in the game as well, so you kind of had nothing to lose either. Like so, it just worked out. Though it was great. Um, mentally, when you're in those positions, you know, unnatural goal scorers say time can speed up a little bit when they're in on goal. You know, a defender comes up, gets a nosebleed, is the, the yeah. kind of cliche, and it all just it all gets very rushed. Mm. You must feel a certain sense of space, and when things are going well, yeah, that this is actually almost time slowed down mentally yeah can you d- try kinda, and explain that well, that's, I think that's the same in every part of your game like right. um, you know if you're having a horrible day where just nothing is working for you if your first touch is off and if you're hitting a few wide balls you kind of do tend to nearly rush things a little bit but whereas there's some days there you know your hand could be a magnet to the ball and no matter where you hit it from it will just go straight over the black mm-hmm. spot and it's very hard to put your finger on why that actually happens but just some days, you know, it just works for you. Like, you know, you look at the, you look at the All Ireland Club final yesterday. Like Jerry Kelly there from Bursley, like he what gave, a player. gave an absolute exhibition I mean, in how, Club Park. How he wasn't man of the match is an outrage. <laughs> I know, but it's just, um, you know, everything he seemed to touch was just, it was just happening for him. And yeah. when you have a day like that, like things come easy. You, you don't feel tired. You don't feel fatigued. Mm. You feel, you know, everything is just happening for you. It must be just um, magical. It's magical, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know. Uh, I suppose the other days then you know you'd feel tired you'd be running everywhere and you just can't get on the ball and it's frustrating and mm. you get a chance and you might you know you might miss the chance or whatever but you just have to kind of understand that 
these things happen as well. Like there will be days like that, yeah. and they won't always run smoothly. And it's just you have to be in a good headspace for when that happens to try and contribute maybe in some other way. Even someone as experienced as you, why is it so difficult if you're having one of those bad days to snap yourself into a good place? It seems you tend to say not just you. I mean, but yeah. any player who's having an off day, it tends to be for the full day. It's hard to snap out of it. Yeah. Well, I think you just need to try and shift your focus mid game then to like, okay, well, do you know what? If if I play in the full forward line people would think, right, okay, he needs to be scoring. Like, mm. so, and you'll probably be judged on your lack of scores, but if you're having a bad day, you probably just need to think, right, it's just not really happening at the moment, but just try and keep working, try and get a hook, get a block, mm. maybe kick the ball out to somebody else that it is working for, you know, and try and contribute in some way. Uh, because, as I said, just won't out, you'll have days like that, mm. and it's just to try and, I suppose, get the most out of a bad day. Um, you can't really just you can't throw your hands up and, and throw in the towel, you know. Yeah. Um, it's just to try and have some sort of a contribution and shut out the noise when everyone says, "What did Camden score? Two yeah. points? Oh, he didn't play well." Yeah. Well, that's it too. <laughs> but look, that's experience. Like at this stage, that might have been something when I was younger that I might have judged myself on. But at this stage, I don't judge myself on how much I score really, to be honest. And it's kind of like, what did I contribute to a temporary win? Hopefully, on yes. the day. So you're 31 to round things off. You look as fit and as lean as ever. You're probably, you know, you talked about the sports science, you're probably a much better athlete than you were at 22. With the back holding up, are you in this for the long haul? Do you love it as much as ever? Do you still want to be playing at 35, 36, 37 forever? I'm kind of just taking it year by year um, because, look, the back could give me trouble at any stage as well and, you know, you might have to, to end it early too, like, but at the moment, while I feel good, I'll just concentrate on this year and... If there's to be more years, you know, I'll judge it at the end of this year, really. I'll probably have a good think about it after the, at the end of this year. But Will you? I think, right. well, look, I enjoy it. I love it. So, But as long as I, my body is fit and healthy, I'd like to be able to stay doing it. Mm. Do you know? But I suppose you analyse every, at the end of every year, you kind of analyse where you're at in terms of, you know, did you hit your goals this year? How does your body feel? You know, so yeah. you kind of... You do that every year, regardless what your age is. You kind of yeah. think about it and analyse. But, but the back injury is that serious that it could rear its head again? Um, look, it's always a little bit, a little bit sore, so it takes maintenance uh, yeah. throughout the year. Like so, you do a lot of work on it outside the training and outside the matches. So it, there is an awful lot more preparation now that I have the back injury than I would have had before that. Mm. So um, you know, there's a lot more hours been put in to having your body right. Mm. But um, look, I suppose I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying yeah. playing. So yeah, it's all good. Where's the hurler of the year trophy? Yeah, it's at home now. In the, it's in my home house there. Um, Mother and father look after look, look after all the all the good stuff. good stuff. Yeah, exactly. So you're not one for looking at the medals every. No, no, we'll, we'll have a good look at them whenever whenever the time comes to retire. I can look at them then. Yeah, and things are going well with Drum and Inch. Drum and Inch, yeah. Um, sure. Look, we have a fantastic club there now. Is it, we, is it a big club? Big it's a very small club. Yeah, a very small uh, village, and uh, we're a small parish, a really close community, and I suppose we've only ever won one county final, which was 2011. So we're trying to get back there and you know, trying our best and we're kind of county semi-finals, county quarter-finals for the last number of years so hopefully this year we'll be able to go a step or two further and, and get something back to the parish because we have a great uh, great bit of talent there in, in the club and um, I'd like to be able to, I suppose, but before I finish off, I'd like to be able to get one more in, yeah. You saw Tommy Welch over the weekend, I mean, what it meant to Tullerone and to them. Absolutely, yeah. Class. Are you still living in the area or have you moved on? I'm just, I'm living in Thurless now at the moment uh, with my girlfriend there, yeah, so... But um, we'll just uh, the home house is only five minutes out the road there, so okay. the home parish, yeah. So it's a nice setup. Yeah, it's great, <laughs> ideal. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, uh, what a year last year. I mean, no pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> for, for I know. 2020. You got to reset that line somehow. Yeah, exactly. But sure, look, you just have to enjoy it, don't you? And that's it. Yeah, look, it was a magical year last year, and uh, the championship is wide open again, 2020. So Seamus Callan. I hope the body holds up. Hope things go well for you again. Enjoy the league. Tipperary against uh, Limerick first up in the Allianz Hurling League. Uh, good to chat to you. Thanks, Mel.